our students welcome to today's session yeah i know you are able to see the screen over here and you can read the poem the code within which i have already done with you so you must be wondering why i have taken up this topic again well this i am doing on request of some of the students they say that their exams are coming closer that is the first term exams this is a new session and students have been promoted to new classes now the schools are going to conduct first term examination perhaps in the coming month or another month so today i am specially going to do this video to teach you how to write answers because many students who have just come to class 8 or 9 have no idea whatsoever as to how to solve questions see till class 7 there is a different pattern that the schools follow every school follows fine but from class 8 onwards teachers do make it a point that they will set questions according to the council pattern fine so lot of students are not able to write good answers so today's video is specially dedicated to writing answers do of course i won't be writing answers for you but i will tell you how to write answers fine so let's go ahead with this poem now this poem as i was already telling you i have done before in a previous video so i will share the link again of that video so watch that video and then continue with this fine so you will know the entire explanation of the poem from that video and in this video you will learn how to write answers So before I tell you how to write answers, let's have a quick look at the entire poem once again. Just a quick look, right? So we know there were six men, six men trapped in a place by chance. They came to that place, and each one of them is holding a wood. There is a fire, okay, and they could keep the fire alive by putting their own logs into the fire, but they don't do it. Why? Because they have some kind of prejudice. Okay, racial discrimination, rich poor, that kind of difference, a lot of other differences they have. Then there is greed. So none of them uses their log of wood to keep the fire alive. And what happens? They all die. And the poet says that in the title, it is the cold within. So they died not of the cold outside, though of course it was really cold, but they died from inside. because of these problems that they had in their own hearts they died because of this now already we have learnt the themes of the poem this is about human greed jealousy discrimination prejudice selfishness intolerance hatred revenge these are the various things we have seen in the poem how the six people each is gripped with some kind of limited thought you know the tone atmosphere of the poem so in what kind of mood is the poem written very sad very melancholy it's a dismal poem okay dismal surrounding cold bitter and bleak cold very dismal very depressing the six people are trapped in a place okay they are caught up by destiny they are isolated individuals though they are together but they each one is isolated having some thought going on in his mind you know not even sharing that those moments that they are together at that time and there is a fire which is dying fine fast pace of narration and the narration of the poem goes stands up by stands up you know fast one pen second man third fourth fifth sixth and then the death also it's a fast moving poem fast because the poet is perhaps relating that the human values are also fast depleting we are perhaps going backwards when it comes to human values we are becoming selfish self centered we don't see eye to eye with many people this is what he wants to say in this poem form structure and rhyme very important factors when we talk about poetry poetry writing is decidedly different from prose writing and poets do take care as to what form they have chosen for their poems what would be the most effective method for them 
to write poetry you know so every poet chooses a different kind of setup so this is a lyrical poem song like okay the movement of the poem of course is song like the theme of course is a very sad and melancholy theme it's a narrative poem it's a story being told to us that this happened that particular night and it is a parable parable i have told you before is a kind of a story that has a moral lesson at the end of it so a lot of parables are given in the bible so here also we learn something at the end of the poem it has eight quatrains that is eight stanzas of four lines each and each consists of four lines the rhyming scheme is a b c d that of course we will see it again when i am doing the question answers video in my previous video i have already told you the various poetic devices and the figure of speech used in the poetry so we have all these figure of speeches given in the poem and as the question comes i will explain it once again figurative significance of the title title of every piece be it prose or poetry is very important and counsel does ask you a question that justify the title that tell whether this title is appropriate or not and here we have the figurative significance what is the inner meaning what is the symbolic meaning of the title the code within the title is symbolic of what of gross lack of human virtues that we are lacking today in human virtues of love compassion gratitude helping each other these are the kind of virtues we should have but we don't have warmth and compassion we are lacking we are lacking in that warmth where we are not friendly with everyone we have our choices okay we have our thought processes and we would not mix so easily with everyone their destiny brings them together they face an adverse situation together now these six people they come together by chance their destiny perhaps bring the, brings them there and they have to share those moments at that place but they are not helping anyone each knows that he can feed the fire with this log meaning he can extend a helping hand and yet he does not do so out of spite prejudice or hatred or greed they have this knowledge that to keep the fire going they have to put wood into it but everyone is just holding back his log of wood because of certain limited thought process they are blinded by the limited thoughts they don't want to see you know they are blinded or so to say each is wearing a different pair of colored glasses it's as if they are wearing a different pair of colored glasses one is wearing red so he will see only red one is wearing blue so he will see all blue one is wearing green you'll see all green so they have different perspectives of life fine time slips out of their hands and they perish time is slipping out the fire is dying and message to the readers very important we have seen it before in the previous video strength lies in unity we need to understand many writers many poets have already told us that strength lies in unity this also is a very powerful poem with this message to live peacefully allow others to live peacefully let's not harm anybody let's not stop anybody uh, you know from having a good life let's not create obstacles for others let us live peacefully and allow others to live peacefully respect differences yes one is white one is black one is rich one is poor okay so let's respect the differences let's not have those limited thoughts and keep away you know let's extend our helping hands our warmth the compassion for the entire humanity do not waste precious time indulging in petty issues so small quarrels petty issues time is important to us life is important okay the very fact that we are alive let's be grateful for this fact fine keep humanity first whoever is in problem if we see somebody in problem let's extend a helping hand and let's help the more we come out of our narrow spheres the more wider the world is and the more happier we will be our own compassion for others will bring us a lot of happiness today i am specially doing this video to teach you 
how to write answers. So that is why I was just taking a quick look at the poem first, so that your memories are refreshed. So here we have a kind of question, the pattern that council has set. So what type of questions you will get? Something like this. Read the extract given below and answer questions that follow. Always you will be given some part of the text. Out of that text, text you will be asked to write answers. Fine. So nothing so difficult. Don't get unnecessarily worried. Don't be in a hurry. Read carefully. Of course the extract you will read carefully and the, read the question also carefully. This is the first paragraph of the poem. Why does the poet refer to six people as six humans? Six humans. So why not six people, six men, why not? So why does he refer to them as six humans? Right? So he refers to them as six humans because he wanted the readers to understand that every person is different in this poem. They have their different thoughts, their different ideas. And that is why instead of taking them as a group, he takes them as six different humans. Fine? Right meanings of happenstance possessed. Happenstance. Happenstance. You have to write meaning. You don't need to write any sentence. Just the word meaning can be there. Write in your answer A and write the meaning happenstance by chance. Please don't use a red pen. I'm just using it here to show the different, uh, to show you the slide, okay? By, use, by the use of a different ink. But you're not supposed to use the red ink for your examination, right? Possessed, that's number B. So, Hey, that's all. No need to write a full sentence because they have simply asked you write meanings. Here you need to write why does the poet refer to the six people as six humans? The poet refers to the six pe people as six humans because. But over here you don't need to write any sentence. What do we understand from the expression or so the story is told? In the fourth line we see. And so the stories told. So what do we understand from here? Okay. We understand from the expression, so we so the story is told that this is a story perhaps which has been passed on from one generation to another because this is a story that deals with human prejudices, the differences in the thoughts of human beings and also we must remember that this has as a back you know the, as a background of the story the civil rights movement that happened in America so here so the story is told meaning that the story about racial differences is not new it has been there for so many years and it has been told from one person to another, from generation to another. And the poet has also heard of this story. And now he is using this story in a poem. Fine. What figure of speech is used in the second line? Second line, what figure of speech is used? How is this important? In the second line, in bleak and bitter cold, we have... The repetition of the sound B, which is an alliteration. What is it? It is alliteration. It is alliteration. Fine. How is it important? It is important because it adds to the music. It's a lyrical poem. It adds to the music of the poem. And also, bleak and bitter, cold. It tells us how much cold. It is cold but how much cold? It is bleak also and it is bitter also. So it is adding to the degree of coldness also. So this is what this device is doing. What type of 
poem is this. This is a lyrical poem. It is a narrative poem. It is a parable. All together. So you can write. It is a narrative poem. Which is also lyrical in form and structure. And the poet wants to give a message to the reader. So it is also a parable. Right? One more answer could be there. That it is an allegory. It is an allegory. An allegory is a poem that uses symbolism. So uh, do go through my previous video also to understand what different symbolisms are used in the poem. Comment on the tone of the poem. The tone of the poem is sad, melancholy, depressing. Okay, It tells us of six individuals who are so different. They are lonely even in a group. Okay, And there is a dying fire and the poet introduces one after the other, one after the other, one after the other and then they all die. So what is the tone of the poem? It is very sad and melancholy. It speaks of six individuals who are doomed. They will die because of their own fault. We have the second question again. Read the extract given below and answer questions that follow. We have the stanza given to us and we have some questions. Explain the first line in simple language. First line. They died fire in need of loss. Now these six people were sitting there and there was a fire. The dying fire indicates that the fire was not burning very brightly. Fine. It is about to extinguish. Okay. And more logs have to be put into the fire so that it can continue. Why did the first person not put his stick into the fire? The first man held his back held his back, he is not putting it into the fire. What does this reveal of his nature? So what do we understand about this first person who is not putting the log into the fire? For of the faces round the fire, he noticed one was black. So here we have the answer. Why did the first person not put his stick into the fire? The first person did not put his stick into the fire because he noticed that there was a black person also in the group. So here we understand what does we, this reveal of his nature. So we understand this person has a prejudice regarding the color of skin. This person must be a white person and so he has some kind of antagonism towards the black. So this is the reason why he will not put his log into the fire. Name the figure of speech used in the third line. Four of the faces round the fire. Four faces, fire. The repetition of the sound, fur. And I said when the sound is repeated in the beginning of the words, it becomes an alliteration. So this is also an alliteration. How is it important? We have already seen how alliteration is important. This adds to the beauty of the poem. Such devices add to the rhythm of the poem. Fine. Explain the symbolism used in dying fire. Logs, I was just telling you in question 1 also. Explain the symbolism. The, the dying fire symbolizes that how the human values are no more important to people. How the warmth, the compassion, the love, the gratitude is now being finished from people's hearts. They don't have any kind of concern okay, about others. This is a very indifferent kind of attitude that most people have nowadays. So this is the meaning of dying fire. Logs. The logs are the virtues, the values. What does the fire need? It needs logs. So we can stop the fire from dying by again bringing out those human values okay, which have which have been submerged by other, our selfishness we need to bring out those values and keep the fire of life alive what could be the theme of the poem according to this extract lot of themes I have told you so you could write any of those themes which would be relevant over here 
prejudice, discrimination, hatred, lack of love. Okay, these are all the themes. So whatever you remember at that time, you can write it. So we come to the third question. Again, read the extract and answer the questions that follow. We have three paragraphs they have given us over here and there are some questions. Fine. Explain, not of his church. Not of his church. Explain it. And then, what figure of speech is used here? Explain that also. Not of his church. This expression means that the person whom he was looking at, this person, the next man, the other person whom he was looking at, did not follow his own religion. Who goes to church? Christians go to church. So he was not of his church. He followed a different set of religion or a different set of religious ideas. So he did not go to the same place. What figure of speech is used here? Church. Church is a word here which is used to indicate religion, Christianity. So instead of saying Christianity, the poet has just used the word church. Okay, so in one word he has described Christianity. Such a figure of speech is called metonymy. Metonymy. Where one word is used to describe the whole. Right? What figure of speech? Explain it. You, I have given you the explanation that metonymy is a figure of speech where one word is used to describe the whole. Right? What action is performed by the third person? What action is performed by the third person? Why and how is this action ironical? What, person, what action is performed? The third one sat in tattered clothes. He gave his coat a hitch. This is the action performed. Okay. The third person tries to bring his coat closer to his body. This is the action that he has performed. Why? Why did he do this? Because it is cold and he is trying to shield himself from the cold because the fire is dying. There is not much warmth in the fire. So he wants to draw warmth out of his jacket or the coat. Okay. How is this ironical? It is ironical because his coat is tattered. It's got holes in it. He wants the coat to give him warmth. But the coat has holes. So this is ironical that the article which is meant to give him warmth is here not able to give him that warmth. Why does the third person call the rich idle? Why should his law be put to use to warm the idle rich? So why does he call the rich people idle? According to the third person who is a poor person, the rich people are idle because they don't do any work, they have a lot of money, they can get others to do their work for them and they will pay for the work. So they are idle, they don't want to do any work. How does he show his contempt for the rich? So here he does not want to add up his log of wood to the fire because there is a rich man sitting there and this rich man is idle, useless. So he does not want to help the rich man in any way. This shows his contempt for the rich man. What is the chief thought, chief thought of the rich person? What is the chief thought of the rich person? Next person whom we see is the rich man. The rich man just sat back and thought. Now what is he thinking? Of the wealth he had in store. He is thinking about all the wealth that he has. This is his chief thought. Now, this is the problem of plenty. Those people who have a lot are also not so happy. You remember in much of Venice, Nerissa says those who have too much also suffer and those who have too less also suffer. So here the rich man is now thinking about all his wealth. And how to keep that wealth away from the eyes of the poor man. This is his chief thought. Is his thought relevant 
in the context of his present situation. At present, what he is thinking is that relevant? Okay, what is he thinking? He is thinking how to protect his wealth from this poor man. So, is it relevant right now? No. His thoughts are not relevant right now because he is in a very difficult situation. There is a fire which is dying. Maybe their homes are very far off. So, the only way to keep alive is the fire. And the fire is dying. But instead of working on the fire, he is thinking about his wealth and how he can save his wealth from this poor man. Why does he call the poor lazy and Shiftless. The poor man called the rich idle and the rich man also shares similar sentiments and he does not like the poor man and he calls them lazy and shiftless meaning having no ambition, no vision. They are just where they are. They have been there for centuries, for years. Okay. So why does he call the poor lazy and shiftless? According to the rich people, the poor people have no vision. They are lazy. They want to keep away from work. So whatever they, uh, the work they get, that also they do it grudgingly. Only for the money that they will get in return. Otherwise, they would not want to do any work. This is the view of the rich man. That the poor people are lazy and they have no ambition whatsoever to rise up in life. They lack that kind of spirit that will make them rise up in life. They are happy where they are, grumbling, complaining about life, okay, criticizing the rich. We've come to question number four. Read the extract, answer the questions. Here we have two stanzas of the poem given to us. Right meanings of be spoke, not. Be spoke, revenge. The black man's face, be spoke, revenge. His face bespoke, showed. It was visible on his face. What was visible? Revenge. Not. Not. Nothing. Nothing means nothing. So just like the word meaning. That's all. What revenge is the black man seeking? What revenge is the black man seeking? The black man, just as a white person, cannot see eye to eye with this white man. So here he is looking for an opportunity that how he can harm the white. He wants to take that revenge that why the white look down on the black. Okay? Why are they so scornful? He is looking for an opportunity there. So he is seeking revenge to harm the white here. How does he plan to spite the white? How will he take his revenge? How does he plan to do it? How he will do it? For all he saw in his stick of wood was a chance to spite the wood, the white. So what he is going to do? That log of wood that he has, he will not put in the fire. Because if he puts in the fire, puts it into the fire, the fire will burn properly. Okay? And the white person will also get some warmth out of it? No. He doesn't want to do it. So how will he spite the white? He will spite the white or he will take his revenge by not putting his log of wood into the fire which can help the white man to feel warm. Name the figure of speech used in this expression. What is the expression? Spite the white. What is the expression? Spite the white. So what is the figure of speech here? The sound, the vowel sound is repeated. This is called assonance. Assonance. That is the figure of speech. Assonance. Assonance. What is it? It is a repetition of the vowel sound in between the words that are placed together in a line or maybe in two or three lines. Fine? Now th there could be also one more figure of speech. Other than this it could be an irony. 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 Now this black man 
wants to take revenge from the white man. So he will not put his fire, the log of wood into the fire. Where the white man will also suffer, he himself will also suffer. So he is willing to overlook his own suffering because his hatred is more powerful than his suffering. So here this is ironical that he is bringing harm to himself, seeking his revenge. Why is the group called forlorn? Forlorn, sad, lonely. Why is the group called forlorn? The group is called forlorn, sad because each person of the group here is so isolated, so lonely and so sad. Explain the figure of speech used. Poetry has a lot of figure of speech. So you need to know, you need to understand. The more you know about these, the better will be your answers. So what is the figure of speech over here? Forlorn group. It is called oxymoron. Oxymoron. Oxymoron is a figure of speech where two words are used to describe two different things. The words are brought together but each word means something different, contradictory, not same, opposite. So forlorn, lonely, group, you know, a union of people. So here we have a group of people, so when they are in a group, how can they be lonely? But here they are lonely, indicating because they are six humans. Each has a different thought pattern, fine. So that is why this figure of speech is used over here. It's an oxymoron. Next question. Describe the character of the last man. The last man of this forlorn group did not accept for gain. We have to describe his character. What game did he play and how? Was how he played the game. So who is this last man? The last man is perhaps a businessman. A businessman always looks for profit, for gain. So he is not going to perform any action where there is no gain. For him to be interested in this game, you have to first give him something so that in return he will give you something. This is how he plays the game. First give and then he will so he is a businessman, he does nothing unless there is some gain. So what is his nature? He is a greedy person. He has no thought about others. He only thinks of his own profit. He waits for others to first do something out of which he will derive some profit and then he will do something. Okay, so this is how he plays the game. For him, this is a game and here ironically this is the game of life. So even in this difficult situation where he is placed at the moment, he is looking for some gains. So how can he find some gain out of here? He should have used his sense. He should have put the fire, put the log into the fire but he doesn't do, it. do so. What is his gain? He is trying to figure out and in his figuring out that what is his profit, the time is slipping out. So every person of the six, you know, has some or the other thought which is stopping him from keeping the fire alive and the time slips out. What is the rhyming pattern used in the poem? We are talking about the overall poem. We have done that in the rhyming, in the notes also. So let's have a look. Forlorn group can be the sound A. Game the sound B. Gave a sound C. Game. Gain. Game. Almost similar sound. So we have the B. A, B, C, B. What is the rhyming pattern? You can just simply write the rhyming pattern is A, B, C, B. We have come to the last question. That's number 5. Now look at this poem. We have 8 stanzas. Stanza number 1 is like an introduction. So the story is told. The poet is trying to tell that this is a story. Okay. Then we have the six stanzas in between and each stanza is describing about one person. And at the end we have a concluding stanza just as we have in the stories some introduction, some conclusion. So here also we have a conclusion and this last extract is out of that 
eighth stanza over here. Read the extract and give him, uh, answer the questions. We have the last stanza of the poem over here. And let's see what questions are put up over here. What was the fate of the six humans mentioned in the the six humans mentioned in the poem all die. That's all you have to write. What was their fate? They all die. Fine. Could they have averted this fate? Could they have changed this fate? Yes. The six men could have changed their fate. How? If so, how? I have just said yes, they could have. How? Each of the six person was holding a log of wood or a stick in his hand. The fire was dying. To keep that fire alive, more wood was required. So turn wise, these people should have put the stick into the fire for the fire to keep going on, keep on going, going, going throughout the night so that they would be safe and they would be warm. So they could have inverted this situation. What figure of speech is used for death? Death still hands. Here death has been personified. So what is the figure of speech used? Personification. Personification. Personification is a figure of speech where human-like qualities are attributed to something which is non-human. Here what is non-human? Death. So what has death done? Death has come and it has laid its still hands on these six people and they have all died. So this is a personification of death. Describe it. I have told you what is personification. You have to give the definition. What is human sin? Was proof of human sin. Their laws held tight and death still hands. Was proof of human sin. Now all the six people, they died. And ironically, they were still holding the log of wood into their hands. Meaning, we have the answer to our troubles. And yet, we don't want to take this option because we want to spite somebody else. Same thing happened with these people. They had the answer. They had the wood, but they did not use the wood. Okay? What is human sin? This is human sin. That we don't want to help others. We don't want to show any compassion. We want to be selfish, self-centered. We want everything for ourselves. We are greedy. This is human sin. Right? Give examples from the poem. A lot of examples you can give from the poem. We are selfish. We are self-centered. We cannot see eye to eye with others. We look at the other person as somebody who is rich or poor or black or white. And we are greedy. We have racial discrimination. We are prisoners of prejudice. We have different ideas about other people. And we consider that we are right. Always. This is human sin. How was cold within a stronger reason for the death of the six men than the cold without? What is within and what is without? Meaning of within is inside. Meaning of without is outside. So yes, it was a cold night. Yes, the cold was so strong that it was bleak and bitter cold. Right? Very cold. And definitely these co people could have died of the cold also. But here, there was something that could have averted the situation. These people had woods, pieces of wood each. They could have kept the fire going. Fine. But they did not do so. So there is cold within. The term cold within indicates that they had no concern whatsoever about others. Okay, cold. Cold here means lacking in any kind of human compassion, human warmth, fellow feeling, feelings of brotherhood for mankind. Nothing. They had nothing. No, no such feelings. 
They were antagonistic, hostile to each other. Did not want to see eye, eye to eye. Just wanted to hide their own log of wood. You know, even though the fire was dying. So how did they die? They died. They died from cold within. They died because of their own fault. Not because of the cold outside. They could have won over it. If they had worked together with some kind of strategy, used their minds, they could have kept the fire going and they could have avoided death. But they did not do so. So how did they die? They died from cold within. Now, though I have tried to put in all types of questions over here, yet there may be some different language that is used. Some different word meanings. I have only picked up a few word meanings. There may be different word meanings. So what you need to do is go through the entire poem before your exam and check out all the word meanings and check out all the poetic devices also. Perhaps we have missed out some. Okay, though I did try to include everything over here, but perhaps I also have missed out something. So do go through my previous video also. I'll share the link in this video. Right? I do hope that you found this video very helpful. See you again in my next video. Until then, bye-bye.